Hi everybody, Dangerous Minds. I'm doing an update on the pandemic. Stopping the cabal up for a moment. I realise not many of you are interested in that, but that's a big piece of the picture and really you should pay attention to it. But anyway, that's beside the point. Let's do a little update on the pandemic situation, which as far as I'm concerned hasn't changed since the day in February when I saw the first report and laughed at the generality of the symptoms. The generality of symptoms remains the same. We still don't know the difference between what is now termed COVID-19 and any other flu the planet has ever been faced with. We have tests now, but the tests are still meaningless as far as my research shows, they are still basing it on some kind of RT-PCR test that the founder of the test blankly stated could not be used for virology due to the nature of its cyclical exponential duplication. That's why he said you can't use it for this and he was embarrassed that they were using it for this. Funnily enough, he died two years ago, so he can't be interviewed or speak out about it now. I find that a lucky coincidence. Hmm. Right. And we have spot tests where somehow, miraculously, a trained monkey takes a droplet of blood, puts through some kind of screening process, and decides if you do or do not have the virus. And if you can or cannot fly up to work, apparently. That's what's happening to friends of mine anyway. They go to the airport, they get tested, their blood gets tested, takes about 10, 15 minutes, and they're told whether they can go to work or not. Now, this is ridiculous. I mean, that they haven't even purified it, but let's not even bother going into that because you can watch the other videos I've done on that, and there's been no update on those. There's been nothing done they're still using that same erroneous information so i don't see how they can test for something that they don't know what they're testing for and even if they did know what they're testing for how can they have a result in 10 minutes when they they seem to know so little about this this virus in the first place and the whole thing is just nuts totally nuts and then a friend of mine refused to do it got stood down from work then contacted our health department and as it turns out they're illegal they're only allowed to do these spot checks in actual clinics by clinicians and this was not a clinician doing these tests at the airport so the whole thing is ridiculous and I don't know what's going on apart from to say I do know what's going on but it's so convoluted let's not even go there at the moment then then we have the new tests they're everywhere I mean Suddenly they rolled out this test and oh my God, people are testing positive. Well, duh. I mean, really? If you're going to be testing people, people are going to test positive. Does it mean they're sick? No. Do we get any information about how these people are? Are they running around? Are they healthy? Are they bedridden? Are they dying? Presumably they're not dying because if they were dying, whoa, it'd be all over the news, wouldn't it? I mean, of course. The other day, one did die, apparently, for the media at least obviously no death is good but it was a 90 year old man a 90 something year old man dies of coronavirus really what what else did he have when is news of a 90 year old man dying unless of course he's murdered or something even news and yet this is national headlines, a 90 year old man dies of coronavirus. I mean, no, I'm, I'm, I can't even compute, it's not computing, but you get the idea. I mean, how ridiculous. Imagine last year when everything was going fine and all of a sudden there's a headline that comes out and it's national news, a 90 year old man, year old man dies of the flu. It's like everybody would go, so? But no, not in these times. Apparently it's not so, and it's... Oh my God, oh my God, we've got to lock down people in towers, and which is what they're doing in Melbourne. And it just the hype is through the roof, the hysteria is through the roof. The zombies are getting deeper and deeper entranced, 
And as far as I'm concerned, the world is completely and utterly crazy. And none of this, none of this makes any sense. And what I don't understand is how did people get so zombified? How did people allow themselves to get so zombified that they cannot look around them and say, hang on a minute, I don't see people dropping dead. All the protests that happen all around the world, why aren't there people dropping dead all over the place? Why aren't the hospitals overrun because of all those people? We know that the virus is so minute that even if people wore masks, it doesn't matter because the the virus is so small that it can go through the mask anyway. So that makes not one iota of difference. And yet, is there any huge spike? No, they tried to up the spike because if you have a look at the Worldometer site, they've deleted a lot of it. But I have the um, screenshots. The CDC over in America in particular wrote to certain states who weren't reporting possible COVID deaths to ensure that they included the COVID, possible COVID deaths. So at least then they could ramp up a few more deaths after the protests. But it hasn't, it hasn't come to nearly what it should have been. Obviously, it's a smart virus and it can adapt. And it says, I'm not going to infect these protesters. Or rioters. I'm not going to go there. I'm, I'm just going to go to a building full of tenants and I'm going to infect those instead. So they have to be locked down. But I'm not I'm not going to these rioters because I, I like these rioters. I don't I don't want to infect them. I mean the whole thing is beyond ludicrous. It makes no sense. And yet people are just buying it. They're just buying it. They're not thinking. They're not people have stopped thinking we have been dumbed down so much that people have literally forgotten how to think for themselves and this has been going on since 11th of September 2001 because since then people have been getting dumber and dumber and dumber and dumber and now they're so dumb they would just believe anything and I fear for what's going to happen in a way in a way that it's just not going to be good because people are so dumbed down what what are we letting ourselves in for or what are they letting themselves in for they're going to walk us all off the cliff they're going to walk us all off the cliff and this is why it's not the one percent that the one percent of the one percent or however many people the committee of 300 whoever it is that has this agenda to depopulate the world and do whatever else is is going on. It doesn't matter if the rest of us woke up and said, I'm not having this. This is ridiculous. I would rather die on my feet than live on my knees. But nobody is saying that. Everybody is not only living on their knees, they're living on their knees with a dog leash around their neck and they're being led. And they go, yes, Master, what? What do I do next? I mean, it is insane. And the people at the top think we're stupid. Well, hello. We're stupid. It's obvious we're stupid. There is absolutely no evidence. And yet people are believing um, the media hype. There, the whole thing is insane. Show me the evidence. Show me the evidence. I've been looking for the evidence. I have been monitoring world ometer stats for I don't know how long now. And I can tell you there's no evidence. And every time the figures go up, there's a reason for it. And what's going to happen is they're going to release something. They're going to release something for real. A lot of people think it's around September. Some people say as late as November. I don't know when it's going to be, but they're going to have to release something for real because they can only pull the wool over people's eyes for so long. And even though people are entranced and zombified and everything else, eventually they're going to start waking up. They're going to have to start waking up. And plus, what? what why are they doing this? Uh, the social distancing must be to keep us apart for a reason. 
Is it so we can't talk to anybody? Is it so we can't have discussions with friends and say, hang on a minute, what's going on here? And kind of get people thinking is, I don't know. I don't know what it is, but it's got to be something to do with that. It's got to be something to do with organisation. It's got to be something to do with so as when they do hit us with something we can't organise easily. We know their algorithms monitor everything online, so they want to keep us online so they can monitor us. If we can organise offline, they're lost. They don't know what's going on. So it's in their interest to keep us online. Putting rifts between us so nobody can, if they do a food shortage, we're going to starve to death. There's a, a site that says by 2025, Dr. Vernon Coleman mentioned as well, Australia's population is going to be down to 15 million. We're currently around, I don't know, 25 million or something like that. So where's this 10 million going to go? And, and these figures apparently came from the IMF and the World Bank. Now, where, and the Economic Forum, where did they get this prediction from? How do they know these 10 million people in Australia are going to disappear? And it's not only Australia, but because I'm Australian, that's the one I took notice of. Now, where are these 10 million people going? They must be going to die. Because they, it, that, it, that's such dramatic, that cannot be only about, it's too many. It's too many to account for the birth rate dropping. So what have they got planned? What do these people know that we don't know? It's obviously something because none of us know why it would be predicted to drop that low. Something's going on. You can call it conspiracy theory or whatever you want to, but it doesn't matter. Conspiracies exist. Everybody knows conspiracies exist. So a conspiracy theory is a viable term. And I don't know why people think conspiracies don't exist. I mean, look at Caesar, for God's sake. No one will deny that was a conspiracy to, to kill him. And of course, the biggest of them all, the murder of Jesus Christ. So conspiracies have been going on for God knows how long. They exist. It's not a theory. Conspiracies exist. Anything between two or more people um, plotting for something is a conspiracy. So conspiracies exist. Hello, people. Stop carrying on this parroting mantra of conspiracy theorists, conspiracy theorists. We're the only ones thinking here. You should be a conspiracy theorist too. It wakes you up and you start having a look at these alternate situations that are going on and why they're going on and how they're going on. How is this happening? Ask yourself, how is this happening and have a look. And then you can start finding some answers. Carl Gustav Jung. Jung said it in Latin and I'll paraphrase it in regular English. That which you need most will be found where you least want to look. Jung explained this as the reason most people fail to be enlightened because they don't want to look at information that's uncomfortable. But that's where the answers are and that's where the truth will be found where you don't want to look, where you least want to look, look, because that's where you're gonna find your answers.